Thank you for the invitation to speak to the Rotary Club tonight. You've always been a very warm and welcoming organization, and let's hope tonight is no different. I've appreciated your commitment to the welfare of Bermuda, a commitment that draws on friendship, community, and a lively interest in the affairs of this great island. I commend you all for your service and your sacrifice. In fact, my father was a Rotarian, so I learned much about the organization in those days. It's been nearly three weeks now since the election of 2007 was called. And I want to tell you that both myself and my colleagues are enjoying the campaign immensely to date. The reception on the streets, in churches, and in restaurants, and more importantly, on the doorstep of the people's homes has been very, very encouraging. It's a pleasure to meet and talk with people. That for us is what the campaign is all about. The people learning their concerns, their fears, their hopes, and their dreams for the future. Getting to know what the people of Bermuda want has been a mission of the United Bermuda Party to reconnect. It's our starting point for the, an effective, responsive government that all Bermudians want and need. Nothing is more important. Good government for us begins with the people and also stays with the people. In Bermuda today, I say we have not had that. The Progressive Labor Party have not stayed with the people. We hear their disappointment on the doorsteps every day. In this environment, people are pleased to see us because we are the alternative. We are the choice for better representation. Another thing that makes this campaign so enjoyable for me and my colleagues is a fantastic team of candidates that we put together. Men and women from all walks of life who step forward to commit themselves to public service. Every time I get in the room with them, every time I canvass with them, I'm strengthened by their desire to build a better Bermuda, their optimism, and yes, their spirit. I say our West End candidates are a prime example of what I'm talking about. With Douglas DeCuto in 29, David Dodwell in 30, John Brunson in 31, Charlie Swan in 32, Alvin Wilson right here in front of me in 33, Sarah Burroughs in 34, Donald Hassel in 35, and Ed Bailey in 36. They are all good people coming together to help the people of their constituencies, to be their voice in Parliament, and yes, to make a difference. Among them, I have many respects for the different individuals. Douglas DeCuto is running in an area that's considered very stronghold for the PLP, but he's a young man with political pedigree and I think he'll do a great job for us. David Dodwell is a seasoned veteran who we need back in the House of Assembly to represent not only the people of Southampton but the people of Bermuda. My colleague John Brunson was one of the new members of the last election, but I think he holds great promise and hope for what we can bring to the political landscape in Bermuda. Charlie Swan is a man widely recognized throughout the island. And if you just spend a few minutes with him, you can realize and understand why. Alvin Wilson is an entrepreneur, sharp-minded, strong, and yes, committed to helping the people in his constituency. Sarah Burroughs, if you don't know, is a Somerset girl, born and bred, enthusiastic, engaging, and totally committed to a healthier Bermuda. Donald Hassel is another son of the soil from Somerset, because of his business and also because of his friendliness, probably he's as well known as anybody in the West End. And finally, Ed Bailey is a veteran of our p political group and he will hold the flag again at the far end of the island. These are eight people of the 36 people that we nominated today. Right, Mr. Registrar? <laughs> Good, duly nominated, thank you. Good, honest people, down to earth people from different backgrounds who represent the diversity of the United Bermuda Party today and the island at large. Each has stepped forward for the people of their constituencies. <coughs> it's a pleasure to walk with them and to know that no matter how tough the political going can get, we have some capable people in our ranks to help us deal with these issues. Our opponents would never want the public to see that. They don't want to see the United Bermuda Party for what it is today. For months now, They've been saying some pretty harsh things about the United Bermuda Party. In the beginning, we were called evil. When the outgoing premier announced the election, we heard we were a party to the forces in the darkness. And the next day, we heard 
that we were morally bankrupt. Well, people in our party urged me to respond. They urged me to hit back. But I had faith in the people that they would reject these words and see the calculations behind them. Calculations that have nothing to do with bringing people together, but everything to do with dividing and conquering people. You may notice that our opponents and their proxies spend a lot of time criticizing us. They try to distract because they don't want the public to focus in on their record in office. A record over nine years that will be re remembered for unmet housing needs, declining graduation rates, neglected seniors, champagne, the Bermuda Housing Corporation, a gag order, and yes, even we had to mislead you. So they attack us relentlessly. They want to make the election about us. And they spend a lot of time trying to tie the United Bermuda Party of today to the United Bermuda Party of yesterday. And that's fine by me. But we want to also talk about the future. That's what the voters want to know about, whether they can expect safer streets, better education, or a piece of the rock. But if the PLP want to keep focusing in on the past, I'll speak to it. But just for a moment, and only in a way that refers to today. I joined the United Bermuda Party in 1997 as a candidate in a by-election. One year later, we as a party were defeated at the polls. In my view, we deserved to lose that vote. The party had lost its way. It was divided and bickering. It was unsure of itself. And so it was not difficult to accept and to respect the judgment of the people because the decision was certainly a sound one. But here's the kicker. Being voted as the opposition was a good thing. It was good for the United Bermuda Party, and it was good for the island as a whole. In fact, I would say it's one of the best things that could ever happen to us. It caused us to reassess who we were and what we were meant to be to the people. It caused us to see the importance of what we were meant to do. It reminded us in the most profound way that representing the people, knowing their concerns, knowing their needs, and doing something about it is the most important thing. It's as simple as that. Politics should begin and end on the doorstep with the people. It's not about politicians. It's not about egos. It's not about entourages. And it's not about self before the island. Our years in opposition have been the most humbling and rewarding years. Humbling for the sharp shock that we got fired by the people. Rewarding because we reapplied for the job. I feel confident tonight as I speak to you when I say that we have been reborn as a party. Reborn in the sense that we have a vision to take this island forward. It's about bringing people together through opportunity and empowerment. It's about helping people who need help. It's about building houses. It's about educating our children. And certainly, it's about caring for our seniors. It's about being positive. It's about being confident, building spirit, and being proud for who we are. It's about being Bermuda, Bermudian. And ultimately, it's about the love of our island home. And that's the beauty of being in opposition. It's allowed us to learn what needed to be relearned, to emerge closer to the people, and certainly closer to their needs. That closeness is reflected in our plans for a better Bermuda. And I will highlight a few at this moment just to give you a feel for what I mean. Beginning with the working men and women of Bermuda, we know that many people are struggling, working two jobs or three jobs just to be broke at the end of the day. As the next government, we will quickly erase cost of living pressures by eliminating payroll tax for anyone earning less than $42,000 a year. That could mean up to $150 more in a person's pocket per month. In addition, we will commit 20% of all government contracts to small businesses. That could be in excess of $70 million a year going to businesses that can use the work and the money to hire workers and improve their business operations. We want to use our time in office to strengthen families through government programs and also through initiatives with people like the Family Learning Center. We will build 500 homes in five years for affordable rent to reduce the housing crisis. 